This program is brought to you by Emory University. Ready to play God. There's been a biological attack on New York City. Did you hear the secrets have a cost? I gotta stop him. Do you think what happened to you, Peter, was an accident? Do you have any idea what you really are? Well, spider silk is extremely strong. I mean, a spider silk in nature comes in a lot of different forms, but uh, Spider-Man has some very particular silk. Uh, Marvel Comics has told us the tensile strength of Spider-Man's of spider silk. It's 120 pounds per square millimeter, which is a fairly typical number for actual natural spider silk. And this is the same sort of tensile strength that you find with steel. So it's extremely strong material. There's two things that he does that are very interesting and have a lot of effect in terms of mathematics. So one is that sometimes he's going to want to shoot a web and hit something and then he's going to want to unreal the spider silk. He doesn't want to just stop and hang on. So for example when he's falling off of a building you can see in the trailer for the new movie him falling off the top of the Oscorp building and you might think oh well if he's going to stop himself he can just shoot the building with the web and then he's going to swing on it. But that's actually a really bad plan to just do it like that because he's going to end up with this very short web that has to be uh, pretty thick so that it won't break and then it's not going to stretch very much and he's really going to jerk his shoulder when that thing comes taut and he swings on it. So what he should do and what he does do when you watch the movie is he shoots the web and then he unwinds a bunch of it and he makes a really long web and he makes this very pretty swing. And that's not just for show, that actually has a real practical effect. So an interesting thing that's different about this movie from the previous movies is that in the previous movies he had the spider silk was something that he, his body made. That was part of his uh, superpowers. But in the current movie it's much more like the comics where his spider silk is from a device. He makes a web shooter. And so that's what he's shooting the, the spider web from. And in fact, it has a little uh, cartridge that it shoots from, a little supply that the spider silk comes from, and it's not so large. So the question is, he's gonna stop a car or this elevated train, the subway train, how much spider silk does he need? And the answer is kind of a lot. It's like five tennis balls worth of spider silk. So unless those cartridges can somehow compress it super down, that's probably too much spider silk. You know, he has an experience about almost eight G-forces on his shoulders. Now for us, normal people, that would be, that would be a lot of force. <laughs> but for Spider-Man, it's probably fine. And what's really fascinating, what comes out of the differential equations for all this is that if he does the trick where he unwinds and he lets the car go farther and he uses thinner spider silk to do it and so that's going to help with the g-forces on his shoulders, well, it doesn't help with the volume. He still needs the same amount of spider silk, in fact exactly the same amount, to stop the car. So is Spider-Man realistic or not? Well, I mean, to begin with, he's supposed to have superpowers. So let's just grant that. Let's say he's got the sticky uh, hands and feet and he's got the spider strength. Well, in that case, basically everything we've talked about is possible. The swinging from the building, possible. The stopping the car and the stopping the train, possible. Except that for stopping the car or train, he doesn't have enough spider silk to do it in his cartridge, most almost certainly. But the spider silk is plenty strong enough, and I certainly believe it's within Spider-Man's super strength to do it. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.